Uh, aloha, friends and family. We're winding down to what's going to be the last few videos of the Australia trip, and they're going to be the Penrith Reptile Expo shows. I was planning to do two parts at least because I, there was a lot going on, and I actually ended up deciding I'm going to do three parts. The first part with my buddy Troy here and all his venomous snakes that he was unloading before the show, and then there was this amazing moment I got to have with this Parenti monitor. Third video will be every vendor basically at the show went on around almost every table at the show and checked out an animal with, with somebody at the show so that'll be the third part we're here with troy have a oh, heaven done <laughs> hovenden 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 i was we're wondering what you're trying to say <laughs> <laughs> troy has a snake catching uh, company what we would call a snake relocation company in the states he's a great guy i was one of the first people i met when i got here to sydney it's before the show is going to start so troy's going to be putting away some of the venomous species and we're going to put these away before the public shows up and uh troy you got anything to say for yourself um yeah so it's going to be fun enjoy the show can you, can you tell us a little bit about uh just your company and how, how you guys started doing that and okay so um <clears throat> basically i i started volunteering to start with, I, I've always had a passion for reptiles and animals in general, but started volunteering with a volunteer organization here. And um, after a while, um, I just decided that I, I'd, I'd like to, you know, create a business out of it and do this professionally. Um, it, there's a lot of pros for that, and um, it's it's just a lot of um, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I, I just really enjoy doing it. So mm. cool. Well, hey, that's the best way to do anything, I think. So what, what uh, different species are we going to be looking at here? Well, let's just run through here. We've got a, a red belly black snake we're going to be putting in. We're going to be putting a mole snake, a mainland tiger snake, a southern death adder, a northern death adder, and a fierce snake, or inland taipan. So he's number one in the world. So he should be a bit, he should be a bit of fun yeah. uh, getting him in there. Yeah, I'm so, going to let um, you do that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's the one you sort of just... You, take a lot Go of care easy with, with yeah, yeah sure he's actually a good snake and he's just shed yesterday so oh, he actually looks beautiful. really good yeah. so I can't well, I'm gonna I'm out. gonna stand back so this is a, a southern death adder he's um, he's actually from the Dejara area in um, Queensland so they call him a Dejara typically they have this very orange coloration so that's it's very striking and they're quite popular in the in the hobby so the thing with death adders is we always just hook them. We don't actually tail them or anything. They usually ride the hook pretty well. So our next death adder, I think he might have shed his skin in there. So these guys, are the, um, they're actually the fastest striking snake in the world. And um, they're quite sluggish and they move slow along the ground. They can move fast if they really want to. Um, but generally they're quite slow and sluggish. They give people a false impression, yeah. false sense of security. But when they actually want to strike, they um, they can go at lightning speed. They put their head right next to their tail and they wiggle their tail. They have a little caudal lure on their tail. And that um, caudal lure, they wiggle it like a worm and uh, a little animal or bird or something comes along and because their head will be right next to that tail as soon as it comes along, grabs the bird. It's a toss up between the coastal taipan and these guys. Some people say these guys have the, the longest fangs, others I've heard say the coastal taipan does, but I'm not sure which one actually does, but I know both are quite long. It looks so much like an indigo snake. Very similar, except for that, the red on the flanks, of course. So some indigos have a red throat? Yeah, I've, actually I've seen that, yeah. But obviously the indigos are not venomous. Right. That's the major difference. That's the major difference. <laughs> as far as I know, there's never been a human fatality. A child, maybe? Was it, was it actually confirmed that it was a red belly? He's actually a very, he's a very well-behaved snake. I don't worry about him very much, except at feeding time. It's funny, he's a totally different animal at feeding time. He'll launch out of his enclosure at me. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Same, same in the States. Yeah. All right, let's put him in the cage. He's going up here. He's coming up. All right, what I'll do, I'll just lower it down. I'll let him crawl out and I'll just grab him as he comes out. It looks scary out there. So you found a mulga snake while you were on your travels. 
you'll notice this one probably looks a bit different to that yes, one. Much lighter color. Different color. So this one is um, from the Brigalow belt in Queensland. So in that part of Australia, they're, they're all typically this kind of coloration. So in different parts of Australia, because molar snakes cut, um, cover a huge range across Australia. You'll find up in the Kimberley and up in Northern Australia, they get the biggest. Um, and uh, you know, like twice the size of this guy. This one is not placid. This one is crazy. <laughs> not this one. <laughs> oh good, he's pointed that way. <laughs> he's a gorgeous tiger though. Look at the color of him. So the thing I love about tigers is how variable they are. There's no two the same. And um, apart from maybe the black tiger snakes, <laughs> they're just black. <laughs> But no, they're just around here, you get all different variations with the colour and some are like got this bright yellow like this one and some are less and or more banded. This guy's a nice chunky animal. But he's um he's got a bit of an attitude problem. He's beha he's behaving at the moment. Ready? One, two, three, in. So this one is number one, the inland taipan. So we do have to be careful with him. Fortunately though, no one has ever died from an inland taipan bite, even though they are the most venomous snake in the world. Right, so this is the number one most venomous snake in the world. He's uh, far more venomous than, than cobras, rattlesnakes, anything, you name it. Um, so basically a rat can be, he can be on the tail of a rat, he'll give it a quick nip, literally split second, bang, hit it, let go, that rat takes a few steps, drops dead instantly. So that way, that's the reason they have such potent venom is they eat these uh, rats in the, in the desert and um, rather than having to you know, bite a rat, hold onto it and have it attack it and fight back and, and hurt the snake, he just bites, lets go and that venom is so potent that it literally drops the rat in seconds so the rat doesn't run halfway across the desert and get lost by the snake. Something interesting about these guys is um, in summertime, so he's this really nice bright yellowy kind of color. In wintertime, he'll go jet black. And uh, so that's because uh, where they come from, they, it gets really cold in winter and it's really hot in summer. And so in summer, they want to keep their body as cool as possible. So this lighter color reflects the heat. Whereas in the winter, obviously, the darker color absorbs the heat a bit better. Even though they are the most venomous snake in the world, everyone expects them to be absolutely ferocious. Everyone thinks, oh, it's the most venomous snake in the world. It's got to be, you know, absolutely psycho. But you can see he's he's quite placid. He's quite calm. Most type, most inland taipans are actually very gentle animals. Troy was a really awesome dude. He, he drove me around for a little bit while we were uh, all out in a big group herping the day before the show. And uh, he had to take off early, but I ha had some good time with him. Freaking cool guy, great kids. I got them on for a couple of what do you knows. Those, those kids are full of freaking energy, man. And, and just, you'll see. What do you know? I know, I know. Yeah. And that they um and that pythons shed their skin every um year. And that um snakes have have their gallbladder is black and I know that their that their gallbladder is only this big that um that a um a um horny devil has lots of forms, but they're not actually spiky. They're just fake. They're just pretend. And, <laughs> and they are um, not actually that. And I know that real neck wizard only um, rules out snake when, when it's scared. And I know that if you have a girl snake and, and you put it with a different snake but it has to be a boy, you'll get half you'll get a head and half, half of the snakes will be um, um, albino if you had an albino one and if you had a normal one some of them will be normal. Venomous snakes have ven venom glands or uh, this one or well, the venom teeth, the 
Tiva about this one. And and the veteran gland is that zappy. Yeah. <laughs> And that's all I know. <laughs> what have you been feeding this kid, man? I don't know where he learns that stuff from. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Tomorrow we'll have a bonus video for you, doing a little interview with Eli. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to check out those snakes. That was the first time I got to see any of those snakes in person, all of them. It was really freaking cool. I really appreciate you for doing that, Troy. Um, you guys, there will be a link down in the description. You can go follow his stuff. Troy's an amazing photographer as well. I'm out of here, folks. I've got another video for you guys tomorrow. Aloha. It's enormous. Look at that. There's Brian. Here, you want me to lay down next to him? Yeah, yeah. Keep his attention. Easy. Come here, buddy. Yeah, he, you got you got his attention. <laughs> <laughs>